That would be the smallest bungee jump in the world. Off with your head, mate. Take a good look. Take a good look. And we can move on. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Emma, these are my allotment diaries. Welcome to my allotment plot in South London. I don't know how many times I've said that. <laughs> Probably quite a lot. So I haven't been here for five days and it is actually amazing how quickly the plot changes in that small amount of time in the month of August. I feel like we're kind of on this tipping point now where everything's done really well growing and it's been like it's everything's bloomed and flourished and done amazing and now we're on this kind of tipping point where things are starting to die and keel over at different points so half the plot looks alive half of it looks like it's struggling half of it looks dead half of it looks like it's just getting going it's like a really weird time <laughs> but i do love this time of year i think it really is like it's, a, it's there's lots of moments where you can sit back and look at what you've done and take lots of pictures and be like this is incredible but there's also a lot of work to come and that really excites me because I love the hard work of an allotment plot like I love all of those jobs that you have to do like I'm talking about those real jobs like remulching all the beds and like gathering up all the horse manure in a pile and waiting for it to rot down and topping up all the paths of wood chip and stuff like those kind of like hands-on allotment jobs are my favorite ones because I feel like I don't get to do those jobs anywhere else other than my allotment plot so this is like my safe sanctuary my safe space like I would never do these kind of jobs at home because I'm just not good enough and you know like I'm not an expert at these jobs so I wouldn't attempt them in my own house I'd get an expert to do it but when I'm here at my plot the whole thing is mine it's an experiment and if things fall down I just rebuild them again and I absolutely love that I just love the freedom of it it's like I'm a little kid and someone's given me a bag of real tools and an old house and just gone just run around it and do whatever you want <laughs> I just absolutely love it so having said that we've arrived today oh my gosh look at the thumb on this glove it's just been completely eaten off is that a bug that's done that or is that an animal I hope that's an animal not a bug <laughs> quite a few things have fallen down and there's a few impending disasters impending disasters now I don't know whether I'm gonna make it worse or better probably worse <laughs> let's be honest um, but I'm gonna show you around a little bit and show you what's been happening so firstly I might have been being a little bit dramatic um, also there's some building work going on over there I don't know if it can show up on camera or not um, but I apologize for that not much I can do firstly I'm being a bit dramatic because all of this here look at the pumpkin arch absolutely incredible um, but it's when we go further down the plot that the problems start to creep up and you can only really notice them when you go really close and you look in detail so I'm going to show you one of the problems that I noticed when I got here um, which at the moment is a small problem it may turn into a very very big problem very very soon <laughs> Firstly, I did not expect my runner beans to do this well anyway, um, but you can probably see the problem. It appears that the structure is starting to collapse on itself and I'm not really surprised. Who knew that runner beans grew this big and this bushy? Look how tall it is, it's mental. It's gone crazy up there. I didn't know that runner beans got this big. This is an issue. Now, if I can fix it easily, fantastic, we'll fix it easily, but I, I've, I'm worried that I'm gonna make it worse. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what to fix it with. I, I'm assuming some kind of twine and sort of tie it on or something. Anyway, we're about to make it a lot worse. Hopefully I don't lose it. Like I lost the, um, what other one did I lose? Like I lost the French bean one. <laughs> Hopefully that won't happen this time, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, I need scissors. I need scissors and I need, oh, nothing's in here. Nothing that I need is in my shed. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I've got these and these I brought for the poly tunnel. They're kind of like these, um, bungee jump cable things bungee jump I mean that'd be the smallest bungee jump in the world maybe a bungee jump for a small rabbit um I don't know what they're called then they're sort of hooks with like elasticated stuff coming off I wonder if that would be better to fix it with let's give it a go anyway sometimes I think when you're fixing something <laughs> best not to eat your hair um it's best not to think about it too much and just get stuck in and then figure it out i mean that's what all the great scientists do don't they they just 
get stuck in and figure it out. You know, no time for writing things down. We're just going to figure it out. Bear in mind, I don't know any scientists and I don't know how scientists work. That's been on manual focus the whole time. I hope, I hope none of my footage is blurry. I don't know why I've got scissors now. I don't think I need scissors. But... turn up and just figure it out because I've just seen a situation where this could come in handy now it's great this is a, this is when I say something and then I immediately get validated for what I'm saying the issue is it's swaying it's swaying a lot I don't want it to sway because if it sways it's going to fall down so I'm going to bungee tie whatever this is the stick to the fence not that the fence is any more secure than the stick but together you know they might make something that's semi-secure, so. There's not much logic to what I say, but when there is logic, you know, it's logical. Right, just stop talking, just stop talking. Okay, I'm gonna move you out of the way, mate. I'm so sorry. Uh... I feel like that's good. I feel like it's, I know it's still a bit wobbly, but actually I feel like I've rescued that. I just feel like I have. I think just by having it secured to the fence as well, it's not gonna fall forward because that will stop it. So at least it won't fall all the way down, I say. But I mean, if we get a big storm, it will. Um, but this bit here has just gone absolutely bonkers. I wanna trim it back, but at the same time I don't because it's like, it's worked so hard to grow that big. I don't want to be the one to come along and chop off its head. Do you know what I mean? Can we all just conclude that I've fixed that now and that's okay? And then if it falls down and I remove it off camera, we just never mention it and just say, oh, she fixed that. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> just let me live in a little bit of denial, just a little tiny bit of denial that that's all going to be fine now and we can move on. <laughs> um, when I first got here, I saw the pigeons up to something, up to something no good. They were down here somewhere. And when I walked onto my plot, they all scattered like teenagers at a house party. And I've just walked in and they've all just scarpered. I don't know what they were up to down there. It doesn't even look like anything's growing. This is just where all the, um, what they called, what are these things called, Californian poppies are. Um, they look dead, don't they, the Californian poppies, but they're not. They actually are one of the only flowers I grow here that close up at night and then open up in the daytime when the sun comes out. So when I get here, they're all closed up like this and they actually open out in the sunshine which I think is quite amazing. I'm pretty sure most flowers do that but I never get to see it. Do you know what I mean? Whereas these ones I physically get to see the transformation. So by the time I leave they're normally open. This has fallen down. That's a shame. I wonder if he's completely snapped or if I can... I think I might be able to prop him up. There's a lot of rescuing at this time of year, you know, just rescuing. fixed not brilliantly but you know bees be happy with that because they can fly on there now oh god not another bee oh god honestly it's got to rescue another bee that's got stuck in here so you need to know if you trust me and go into my little dome no i know it's scary I know it's scary. Yes. Wait, 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 because look, I'm leading you. Yes. Brilliant. Finally, a bee that listens to me. Um, so, tomatoes are still not going red. I feel like this is a running theme of my vlog this year, is that my tomatoes are just refusing to go red. Um, I feel like there's a tinge of red on this, but it could just be the lighting. Oh, the white fly as well, going crazy. 
Nope, they are still completely green. <laughs> They're not going red at all. Why are you not going red this year? What is wrong with you? Everybody on Instagram has got lovely red tomatoes and I'm stuck with you guys. Um, there are a couple of things that you told me to try. One of them is to chop the tops off the tomato plant and it will stop them from trying to grow up and focus the energy into those and um, turning those red. So we're gonna do that. Right, off with their heads. I think probably down to there for you. Off with your head, mate. Maybe it'll just send a message to them as well when I chop their, stop, chop their heads off, you know. Right, turn red, or the rest of you will follow, you know. We've got to show them who's boss. Off with your head, mate. Off with your head. Stop growing up. Start making those tomatoes red. Such lovely tomatoes as well. Why won't you just grow red? and I don't know what you are you're about four tomato plants in one I don't know what you are I'm just leaving you I don't know what you are what you think you're doing so now that we've decapitated all of our lovely tomatoes <laughs> I hope you've learnt your lesson guys we're going to feed them with some tomato right and just give them a really good feed and I think I'll probably wait one more week and if they haven't started to go red in a week I'm going to pick them and put them on a windowsill and and redden them at home I don't know if that's the word redden them make them go red force them red um, at home on a sunny windowsill which apparently you can do apparently if you put them with bananas they go red quickly as well there's loads of tips and tricks for it but usually that's what you do kind of at the end of the season when you have green ones left I've never had to do it before for my actual tomato crop so it will be a first <laughs> But I think they can survive a little bit longer, so we will give them a bit longer. Let's give them a feed. Some spring onions in here. It's weird, isn't it? Oh, look, my duck's back. There he is. Right. So this is just uh, rainwater. Someone said it's not rainwater, but I don't know how you'd know that when you don't. I don't know how I'd know if it's rainwater or not. I can't ask it, you know. And this is tomato, right? So we just fill it up, whack it in, give it a bit more, because we don't trust the instructions. No one does. Take an extra swig to make sure. Don't lie, you do it too. Right, let's give you that feed. Now that I've decapitated you all, I'm going to give you a feed. Say sorry. I've just noticed that some of my peas are coming up. Remember I planted some peas in here, I kind of scattered them. Um, in, and I'm going to harvest the pea shoots when they get to about that tall. I'm gonna start cutting them and eating them as a salad. They are starting to grow. Oh, look at the white fly. Look at this. It's just not okay, is it? It's just not okay. I was just sort of hoping that they would just go away. Um, but apparently bugs don't do that. Just because you want them to leave doesn't mean they leave. Anyway, I think that's gonna be a problem for another day. <laughs> I think I've got enough problems going on without worrying about the white fly. You can have the kale. It's alright, I've got more kale at home. You can have that. Right, okay, let's move on. there's a problem with my pumpkins because I feel like that's so 2022 um, but I think there might be a problem with one of my pumpkin plants it seems to be dying guys it's dying prematurely dying somebody sent me a message all right crows calm down I'm gonna fix it somebody sent me a message when I was talking about mildew and saying that it wasn't mildew I think it probably is mildew can you see all the little spots um, and this whole pumpkin plant has started to die back. 
which is really hard. So this is this is what it does. This is what mildew does. It basically starts to kill off all the leaves, and it's obviously like it's got really far up the plant now. Do you know what though? Having said that, right? Having said that, so this is one of the first pumpkin plants I put in. I've just seen one of the pumpkins from it, and the pumpkin kind of looks ready. So I think the way you can tell if a pumpkin is ready or not is you stick your fingernail in it and if it sort of leaves a really big mark when it's not ready but if it doesn't and that just shows that the skin's hardened I think the skin is really hardening I think it almost might be ready and it's a very nice deep orange colour There's another one in here Yeah again look that one looks done It really looks like a complete pumpkin You know yeah, I'm still getting, I'm getting a little bit of a mark with my thumb, my nail, but not much. Not much. So I never quite know when they're ready, but I have a feeling some might be. Yeah, you just, I didn't even have to cut him, he just came off. That's a ready pumpkin, that's finished. He's ready to go. Isn't he, oh, get off. There's always one of you little snails on it, isn't there? Isn't it beautiful? This is a Jack B. Little. He really is little, isn't he? Dinky little pumpkin. He's lovely, he is. Oh my goodness, I think they actually might be ready to pick. Which leaves me in a predicament because I'm not ready to pick them. <laughs> they might be ready to be picked, but I'm not ready for you. I'm not ready for you guys. Um, I'm going on holiday soon and I wanted to pick them after when I got back because I don't know what to do with them all, but it may be that I have to take some of them home now. Um, they do keep for a, a while, but I was just I just wasn't ready for you guys. <laughs> I just wasn't ready for you. But yeah, one plant is ready. So all of that dying back there, that must be that the plant is literally finishing. Finishing, and that is one of the signs that the pumpkins are ready to pick. And I think I can confirm that this plant is ready. Uh, I'm going to leave the rest of them on there and bring my kids down. My kids can come and pick some because I think they'll be really excited about that. That is a really exciting crop to pick, a pumpkin. That is super, super exciting, so brilliant. Also, I've noticed that some of them are, this is a baby boo plant, by the way. I've actually got baby boos growing this year. This is the first time in like two, three years that I've actually managed to grow them. I can see another one in there, just hiding behind the back, it's amazing. I'm gonna tie some of these in because they are sticking out a bit now. came in today I actually did notice some good news <laughs> good news I hear you say I know some actual good news for my plot so I noticed the blueberries have actually started to give me blueberries so I'm gonna go and pick some and try them this is the first year my blueberry plants ever given me blueberries I think it's because I moved him I think he just needed some different scenery or something he just wasn't happy where he was so oh my gosh it is literally no wonder I could see it when I got into my plot it's literally bursting with blueberries I've never seen so many blueberries on this plant before in my life. I mean, I've never seen a blueberry on my plant before. So this is definitely the most by like a mile. Incredible. And I can't believe the birds haven't had them. Do they not like them here or something? No, they just like all my brassicas, don't they? <laughs> Why eat blueberries when you can eat brassicas? That's what they think. Right, let's try some. Let's try ourselves a little blueberry. Oh my gosh, so excited. I tried one from my plant at home and it was really quite sour. <laughs> so. I'm not expecting much from these, but we'll try. Right, here he is, little blueberry. Oh my goodness. That is not sour or tart at all. That is so, that is so sweet. I'm so surprised. I'm so surprised. Let's try another one. Mmm. good that is so weird because even when I buy blueberries like in a box from a shop I get like they're quite tart they're quite sour and I always thought that's what blueberries were these are like a different level of sweetness they're amazing oh 
my goodness it's like you can actually taste blueberry not just like sharpness it's amazing oh my god it is so good mm. i really should save some for the kids it appears i'm just eating them all oh these are like the best blueberries i've ever toasted in my life and i grew them that one's a bit overdone Mmm, I just eat it off the plant like an animal. Five minute se segment of me just eating blueberries. Right, and that's all of them. Gone. <laughs> just ate every single one of them. Well, thank you, plant. You've been here for four years and you've just given me a little, little feast of blueberries. Thank you very much. That was worth it, wasn't it? That was worth four year wait. <laughs> Imagine you just refused to buy blueberries and um, you grew a blueberry plant, it took you four years to grow and you just sat here like I did and just ate them all in like 25 seconds. Anyone who says growing your own food isn't worth it, they're lying, <laughs> it's so worth it. back home now for my kids um, because they my husband's working from home and they're home with him and I've just got to get back and be be mum for the rest of the day really <laughs> but I absolutely love coming down to my plot first thing in the morning it really clears my head it gives me such a good it fills me up for the rest of the day and it just puts me in such a good mood and I feel like I've got that vitamin D kind of like through the clouds but still I mean sun is sun right um, and I've got my my nature fix and I've been outside and I've got fresh air and exercise and it's just fantastic and it really sets me up for the day particularly when like my kids are home now because it's summer holidays and it's been it's always a little bit difficult when they're home because they always want stuff and always want to do stuff and so you kind of your normal routine is kind of disrupted and stuff it's fantastic I love spending time with them but having this little bit of headspace in the morning it does wonders for me I will be set for the day now whatever they want to do I'm there I can be fully present and I just I love that about my allotment plot that's what it really gives me I hope you're enjoying your allotment plots too. Uh, leave me a comment below, let me know what jobs you're up to at the moment. It's end of August, so hopefully your plots are falling apart too. And I say that in the nicest way because if it is just me that is having to rebuild everything, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Um, so I hope that you are, you know, enjoying your plots and, and hopefully it looks a bit like mine and that will make me feel better and hopefully it makes you feel better to see my plot. There we go, we're even now. I will see you again in my next allotment vlog. See you then. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.